Hello, and welcome to another episode of Making Sense of Social Media. My name is Lori Clausen. I'm your marketing mentor. Today, we get to talk to a brilliant individual. His name is Jarrett. I can't wait for you to meet him. I was just reading his bio, and I'm like ex- bouncing out of my chair, excited to speak with him. Jarrett is a brilliant strategist, and among other things, he is also an Emmy-nominated producer and director who has created and sold series to Hulu, Amazon, and The CW. As someone who loves pop culture, (laughs) television, good movies, good shows, I can't wait to talk to him. But of course, we are here for you, the small business owner, in helping guide and direct you when it comes to strategies and tactics on how to use social for the success of your business. So I really look forward to hearing what Jarrett has to say, bringing all these things together to make sense of social media for you. Hi, Jarrett. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself to those watching and listening today? Thanks, Lori. My name is Jarrett. I began my career as a TV producer and director, and I got into entertainment marketing when those opportunities started coming my way. Um, I started developing content-heavy interactive experiences uh, for TV, um, social campaigns for TV and film properties uh, to keep fans engaged with the world of the show, you know, between seasons, between episodes, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, developed something like 100 projects over the course of the years. We were nominated for an Emmy Award for our work in digital strategy. Um, And I've only been learning and revising my approach ever since. Um, That's where a lot of my insights and philosophies come from that I've started to apply to the world of small and mid-sized businesses. That is so fascinating. Like, I I can only imagine, and of course, it's a little bit of fangirling over here because, you know, you're in that world of pop culture and television and movies and what have you, but I can imagine like just the premise of building community and, and connection is, it just doesn't matter if you're like Brad Pitt or the local dog walker, like you, it has to, it, you have to translate who you are and what you do really effectively through social media and just learning how to do that well feels like a chore, but it doesn't necessarily have to be. No, I I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's sort of the opposite. It's really gratifying to connect with people around something that they're passionate about. Mm -hmm. Um, People get really excited. Um, And, and the MO of SuperServe. So the company that I, my company is now SuperServe. It's a boutique agency. We specialize in audience and community development and engagement and retention and sometimes monetization around audience strategies. Um, and, you know, I guess most people don't work in entertainment and don't have access to talent and and creators and, you know, the inside scoop on TV shows. And, and so in my experience, uh, it really what fans and followers want and are excited about is access and status. It really comes down to th- those two things mm. and being able to give people access and to some degree status within a social community um, is very exciting for them. Mm. Um, and so that sort of led to my whole philosophy of really being about surprise and delight and delighting fans, surprising them, you know, SuperServe's whole MO is about treating fans better than they would ever expect, making them feel seen and heard and appreciated and valued, valuable members of the community, making them feel like privileged insiders. Um, and and for small and medium-sized businesses as well, those things go a long way towards bonding your followers to you, like creating loyalty. Um, I have, which- oh, if I may interject, because I have yeah. an example, I am a humongous fan of a local um, small business owner, female owned. I buy all of my skincare from her and I have from day one. And just recently, she just randomly sent me a, a package of some of her products just to say thank you. And when I tell you I felt like a celebrity or some big influencer, like it meant the world to me. And so like anybody can do that. It's so, anybody. it's so true. Hey, it's amazing how many people don't look beyond using their socials as a one way megaphone for blasting promotional messages. Mm. And yeah. it's, it's a mistake. It's the wrong way to use socials. They're, they're 
such a great conduit for making two-way conversation happen. Yeah. And yes, that takes more effort, of course, to have a two-way conversation with somebody as opposed to just putting up your post and then moving on with your day. Mm -hmm. um, it's a bit next level, but it doesn't have to be major. But right. making your your followers or your customers or your clients feel valued and feel appreciated really takes just a little bit of thoughtfulness right. and a little bit of action to do. And like you say, like it makes you feel incredible. Like to me, that my philosophy is that we're all about turning fans into evangelists, right? I, I want right. people to be excited about the brand and talking about it with their friends. You can't believe what they did for like, just exactly what you just did. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, that is the name of the game, right? You want to, you want to differentiate yourself. You want to create loyalty amongst your customers. Yes. You have a great product or services, a service, mm -hmm. but there's a lot of that out there. So how are you going to differentiate, mm. differentiate yourself? And it's really easy to do if you are just a bit thoughtful about, you know, that sort of action. You're right. not going to some other person to go buy your skincare now. Never. I'm I'm for life. I'm right. I'm like, even when I'll, I'm 92, I'll be buying her retinol and the <laughs> the vitamin okay. C and all the things, hoping it'll yeah. do something. <laughs> it, By 92, really... I I don't think I'll care that much anymore. <laughs> you never know. But you never know. Your needs may be different, and she may have something for you. That's you true. Know? And Alexandria. you'll go to her first. To try and find <laughs> oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. And so that, you know, that kind of loyalty and retention is really important across mm -hmm. the board. Any business, any, any service needs to, to have that because it's, it, you go to so much trouble to onboard a new client or customer. It's much easier to hang on to them to onboard than to onboard a new client or customer. So I like how you emphasize that it needs to be thoughtful because it goes so much beyond just putting a post on Instagram saying, I want to thank my you know, everybody for re reading and, you know, watching my posts and I'm guilty of doing that myself. So I, I'm saying this to myself just as much as anybody that I need to be more intentional with how thoughtful and, and grateful I am to my audience. So, mm -hmm. yeah. It's true. And yeah. look, I think most problems can be solved with, with taking five minutes to actually think about it or 10 minutes to do some research and then, mm -hmm. you know, put a plan in place. It doesn't have to take long, but you just need to dedicate a little bit of time towards, okay, now I'm going to figure out this piece of my strategy. Right. How am I going to do this? And, you know, if if delighting your customers is is what your goal is in, on this part of your marketing, mm -hmm. it doesn't take much. Right. It doesn't take much. It doesn't have to be expensive. It doesn't have to be extravagant. Sometimes, I'm, just... sometimes um, certainly on the entertainment side, but sometimes just putting a spotlight on them, shouting somebody out is enough to make their day. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it just, it depends on who you are and what your relationship is with your clients and how they view you and, and what you can do to make them feel special. Right. And if you know them well enough, which as marketers, we should, we likely know what it is that makes them feel special because we are aware of what pains them, what irks them, what keeps them up at night. Right. So, yeah. And and it just, yeah, it comes down to, it comes down to sort of a, a human understanding of people and trying to relate to your customers from a human perspective, which, you know, no doubt you do when you're, you know, interfacing with them as a customer. But for some reason, when, when it's intermediated through social media, it's kind of like, I'm just sending things out into the ether now, mm -hmm. as opposed to I'm targeting my clients and my customers who are the people I'm concerned about seeing this post or Exactly. getting this piece of information or being entertained by the thing I'm posting. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is just so great, Jarrett. So let's go down the pathway of strategy. Like what would you consider a good, let, let me backtrack a little bit for the small business owner who is a self-employed solopreneur. They just are looking for step-by-step how do I get from starting or starting over to having built a a community of evangelists? That yeah, is that what you call them? Evangelists? I think yeah, so. I, I, yeah, evangelists. That's right. Fan fan evangelists. <laughs> yeah. There's a Lorieism for you. <laughs> well, you know, there's this whole concept of fan labor, which is fans sort of doing your marketing for you. 
And that's sort of what um, evangelism is all about. And really, you see it much more in entertainment because people are excited. Right. They want to show, oh, there's this great show. The, the socials are so great. They treat me so well. You should check it out. That is, first of all, it's the most authentic kind of marketing you could ever get. Mm -hmm. That sort of word of mouth from a trusted person. Um, but getting fans excited, getting followers or customers excited enough to want to share you because you're a great thing, you're a great service or you're a great product. Um, that's, that's sort of the brass ring. And it, like I said, it doesn't take much to do mm -hmm. um, beyond having great, you know, great quality product or service. So to answer your question strategically, you know, how do you go from zero to, you know, to as far as you want to take it? Um, you know, my process is I do a, I do an audit of, of a client's socials. Um, and if they're just starting at zero, then I might do an audit of competitor socials just mm. to see what people are doing. Mm -hmm. um, I do a deep dive with that client or customer on that, sorry, my, that client on, on their brand, what it's all about, what their hooks are, what their story is. Um, I want to know how they view it and how their audience views it, might view it, see if there's a discrepancy there. Um, and then I get into sort of audience demographics. Who are, who are you, who's your customer? Let's find out about them. We build personas around them, which, which sounds complicated, but isn't all that complicated. Um, yeah. but it's really useful in determining what you're going to put out content wise on your socials. Yeah. What's my strategy for content? So I have always relied on personas. Um, I like constructing them. Chat GPT is, can be helpful. There's a plugin called Yabble that's really good. And we'll do surveys, oh. virtual surveys with your, with your personas to find out what's important to them and drill down into the demographics, which I find really helpful. Sometimes, you know, sometimes it's just not practical to try and set up a, an actual market group or, right. or, or you can find a lot of research online about demographics. Deloitte puts out demographic reports all the time. Oh, that's right. They do too. I've used them as well. Or yeah. At and they're really, well. they're, they, they, they can have some great insight in them. Yeah. Um, and then of course you, you can get up all to, into the paid services for, for that kind of information. But mm -hmm. uh, for most, for most um, solo, solopreneurs, it's hard, it's hard and expensive to do that. So there are other ways to do it, but I think it's a valuable step. Um, and then I will break down a brand into its topics and touch points. So everything that a brand relates to. So I, to give you an example, I just I'm working with um, a kid's hygiene brand. It's like a hygiene toy out of LA, and there was I found I came up with fifty sort of topics and touch points that related to the brand, all the way from parenting hacks, you know, hygiene tips, um, animal, you know, pet tips, all the things that sort of relate to that world that right. I can be creating posts around that are going to be relevant and and hopefully valuable to the followers I'm trying to attract or the followers I've already got. Um, cause, because your social posts really should either entertain or educate or provide value in some way. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and it's about having a balance, you know, what's your social voice? What's the cadence that we're gonna be putting these posts out at? Right. Um, Being authentic but, in that regard is so important. I find people just try too hard. And yeah. it's just like, no, like be yourself. I personally, I, I'm a big goofball and I will be funny and silly. And I stopped caring because <laughs> that's how people know me now is that I'm just, I'm the class clown and that's okay. And I and still provide the, for you. yeah, absolutely. And that's the thing. Every brand is different. Every, every, mm -hmm. you know, entrepreneur is different. The vibe of, of your business is going to be totally different from someone else's. And you're exactly right. The authenticity of that is going to be something that will draw people to you. Um, yeah. I like this person. I like their vibe. So much of this is just about connecting on a human level. Yeah. And I think that's missed a lot of the time. It's about the triggers that get people excited, um, that, get, that make them feel, uh, feel warmly towards you. Um, you know, when they're appreciated, they feel spectacular. So it's, it's just about understand a basic understanding of people and psychology and, and motivation, um, inspiration. Again, it all comes down to what's your brand? Who are we trying to attract? What's going to mm. be meaningful to them? 
What do you say to the small business owner, Jarrett, who loves all this information is like, yes, I'm on board. And then they like imposter syndrome just sets in or like fear of being on video or they just, (laughs) they just can't, they just don't believe in themselves enough to that they're delivering value, even though it's obviously there. Like how do, how do we as, you know, marketers and knowing that it's possible, how do we help them? To me, it goes back to why'd you launch your business? You have something that you Mm -hmm. believe in there, your product or your services, right? Whatever that is, that's where you draw your strength from. Yeah. Imposter syndrome is real Mm -hmm. and it's hard to combat, especially when you're building, you need wins, I think, to combat that. Yeah. Really, really sort of beat it down. Um, so you, until then, you need to draw strength from somewhere and drawing strength from the, your belief in your product or service really to me is the most authentic way, authentic place to draw that strength from right. because there's no, unless you're completely misguided, you know, then, and your best indicator of that is, do I have sales and do I have happy customers? Yeah. Um, then, yeah, then I think you need to draw that strength from somewhere and, and drawing it from your belief in what you do is the truest place to draw that from. Yeah, that's so uh, that's so true. And again, you know, I I've personally I've struggled with this myself over the years. I've been in business for self for over 13 years already, and not a year has passed where there hasn't been a moment of, oh, what am I doing? Why am I doing this? Like, how do I keep moving forward? But I do because I love it and I love the connection. That's why I started in social in the first place is I loved connecting with people from all over the world. And yeah. here I am now, I, I have the absolute privilege and delight of getting to interview and talk with all these people just like yourself. So it's just, it's such a full circle moment for me. And I'm just so thrilled that I'm finding these amazing people like you to to bring so much value to small business owners. Thank you. Um, I really yeah. appreciate it. Appreciate the opportunity to chat with you. Yeah, uh, me too. I, I think that we all go through that kind of self-doubt and it's really amplified when you're trying to do something like launch a business on your own. Mm-hmm. Um, you need that validation. And, you know, there are ways to get that early market validation without, you know, even before you launch. Um, but even then, until you've got sort of a thriving business or even just a, a, a sustainable business, mm-hmm. You're going to go through all those moments of self-doubt, you know, I've definitely, you know, I've launched three agencies over the years and sometimes that, that roller coaster is daily. Sometimes you're riding a high, you get a great phone call, the deal goes through. And then the next phone call is a crushing piece of news and you're, you know, you're in despair and it's just a roller coaster. Yeah, exactly. You just, you have to have the conviction of your beliefs to, to continue on. Um, or you fold up shop and go get a job somewhere else, you know? Yeah, exactly. Go work at a gas station, which yeah. if I'm being honest, that is something I had to do once upon a time. <laughs> I did it. I did it. <laughs> I learned a lot from working at a gas station, really like customer service. I, yeah, that was a, that was a really great learning experience for me. <laughs> yeah. I was, but, I was in my late teens when we when I did it and it was was less of a learning experience and more of a <laughs> an easy job that with a, with a boss that didn't really it wasn't even on site so it was, it was yeah that's awesome <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking a little bit before we started recording about conversions and that it's not really the job of social media marketing anymore 2024 and beyond and things change constantly so i mean what i'm saying right now might be outdated in a year from now but how do we as small business owners get those conversions of sales well in your opinion i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of so just to back up social media Mm -hmm. used to be a great conversion funnel you know Mm -hmm. 2007 to 2012 was the golden era of organic reach on Mm -hmm. social platforms there, you didn't, there was, you know, the broad visibility was prioritized by the platforms. You got a lot of visibility. There was not a lot of competition from other businesses. It didn't require heavy investment in advertising. 2013 to 2015, things changed. Uh, the yeah. the um, social platforms changed. Their, their, mature, their business models matured. 
and they change their algorithms to favor personal content over business content um, intentionally to get businesses to start paying for that exposure. You know, mm. reach is a throttled metric um, oftentimes on the social platforms mm -hmm. and the, the design is to get you to pay to get that reach that you used to enjoy for free. Yeah. So, you know, and I think, I think, we've all sort of felt that. I don't know how many people have sort of actually sort of put that into concrete terms for themselves. I think a lot of business owners are frustrated by social and think, you know, I'm doing all the same stuff I used to do. And I used to get such great conversion off my social and now I don't, and I'm not sure why. And it's, it's sort of because of this change. Mm -hmm. um, so it becomes expensive to do what you used to get for free. So for me, social media is still a very important part of the mix, a critical part of the mix for your branding, but it's really what's changed is how it's supposed to function for you. And um, now it's about visibility into your business, uh, giving you an opportunity to show your authenticity, your the ethos of your brand, um, what you're all about. And, and I think even on a, a step up from that, it's really there to show that you have your game together, that you are a functioning mm -hmm. business, that you've got current socials that are consistent, um, that when people are coming to validate you on your, you know, from millennials, millennial on down, the first place they're going when they want to validate you as a prospective, you know, business they want to do business with is your socials. And mm -hmm. if your last post is from 2022, and, you know, and your socials are out of date, you're out of date. Mm -hmm. um, it's a, quite a poor reflection on you. So just having them be consistent and current and professional sort of quality, um, which again, doesn't take much is often enough for most small business owners, medium sized business owners to just have um, a, a, a great presence. So people, so you look current and, and the content you're putting out is valuable of some kind. Um, you know, when, when the platforms changed, all kinds of alternative funnels rose. Content marketing was one of them. Influencers was another one. There's mm -hmm. there's other places to go um, that serve as funnels, as the funnel that social media used to be. Um, but I think that for a lot of people, you, you need to realize that your socials aren't a place you should be um, relying on for that sort of conversion that you used to enjoy. Mm -hmm. uh, and to treat them differently. They're still important treat them differently, use them differently. Um, you know, we have a program that we just developed called Community Compass. And the mm -hmm. idea is we elevate your socials um, by letting you, by by facilitating a partnership with a community group. Um, oh. A women's shelter, a food bank, uh, an animal shelter, whatever, whatever the group is, a charity, yeah. uh, an organization. And the idea is, is that, you know, one of your content streams basically becomes dedicated to the Community Compass activity and the idea is that you and the people behind your brand your business align yourself with one of these partners that's important to you and meaningful to you and you throw the weight of your volunteerism and some of your social media behind their cause and in doing so you elevate their mission by putting a spotlight on it in your socials to your audience you show people who are coming to your socials what your brand stands for and that you stand behind you know, contributing to the community and you wind up with a content stream for your social media that is a little bit different than, you know, your promotional posts or your right. comedy, whatever it is. So it's a content stream <laughs> that it, it's using your socials for social good. Yeah. And it, it's meaningful to you, the business owner. Hopefully it's meaningful to your customers they, that they see what kind of person you are, what kind of business you run and your staff and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, and it really helps, you know, give some extra um, push to the organization you're aligning yourself with. And that's- That is, it's so cool, Jarrett. Wow. But that's a simple example of just being a little bit thoughtful and mm -hmm. doing something that doesn't cost you any extra. There's no, you know, there's, you're not putting money. It's really a time thing, mm -hmm. but it does so much to- market you in a way that that isn't really marketing yeah you can tell me if you think that's marketing but to me that's really just putting your money where your mouth is as a yes. as an ethical person 
living in a community that wants to do, wants to be res socially responsible. Yeah. Um, and so I think it's really, it's a valuable way to, first of all, satisfy a need on your socials, but mm -hmm. it does so much more. And it, it's just, it's just putting a little bit of time and thought into how I can, how I can create something that's win-win all the way around without breaking the bank. Yeah. No, I love that. And in fact, that's the next level of uh, tool that I provide to my coaching clients in terms of a, it's a content planner spreadsheet thing that I built. And one of the pillars is community. So right. it, that's, it's the exact same thing. Just yours is up leveled quite a bit. And I just, I'm really going to explore that a bit more because I just think that's so, so important and really, really cool. Wow. I love it. Really simple. So next question I have for you is, by the way, this is awesome. Like I'm just enjoying this so much. Oh, good. Thank you. <laughs> um, how in your experience, expertise, opinion, do you leverage the power of storytelling and emotion in your social media content? So it's a great question. I mean, storytelling is everything, you know, um, yeah. I come from TV, so I'm always focused on the story. Mm -hmm. um, and whether that's, you know, a post or a series of posts or individual pieces of content, stories really, it's a part of everything we do. And I, I always want to appeal to people's innate sense of curiosity and emotion and especially humanity. Humanity is sort of the core of everything we do. We really like to connect with people on a human level and get to know people, you know, on behalf of your brand and, and bring them into the tent. So, you know, story to me is an essential element of the content side of what we do, but it really comes down to that analysis of the brand and what its sensibilities are and the, the target uh, customer or audience that we're trying to, um, you know, attract or retain or engage. Mm -hmm. um, so it all comes out of what the story of the, you know, of the customer is, what of the brand is. Um, and then from there, we can extrapolate all kinds of things. Like, you know, like I said, we, we hit 50 touch points off that kids hygiene brand. Yeah. There's so many ways to go and so many angles to take when you're trying to craft this piece of it. And the good news is, is that once you sort of, it doesn't take long to define it. And once you define it, you, you have content for years. Exactly. You know? um, and that's the way I like to work. I like to sort of establish the content strategy, the engagement strategy, figure out what the posts are going to be and then put it all into one of those spreadsheets that you were mentioning yeah. and build it out, you know, a couple months, a month, six months, whatever, whatever the plan is mm -hmm. that we're going to do. And um, then it's all done and you don't have to think about it. And it's something that you can do for yourself. If you're just going to do this all on your own, you can take a, a day and do this sort of thought process um, and then come up with your posts and, and chat GPT can help you with that, frankly. Yeah. Um, and some of the other AI out there. Um, I'm fond of Gemini. That's been my new favorite. Yeah, I haven't used it yet, but I'm hearing I about like it. I like it. Yeah. And I'm very into the text to image or text to video AIs also. I've tried those too. And I just, I don't know if I'm just not imaginative enough, but I just keep going back to, you know, give me a dog in a field of that looks like Van Gogh. And that's kind of where I stop. <laughs> you know, there are, there are, a, I, there's a bunch of articles out there about how to, how to prompt and, and tailor the yes. prompt to get the result you want. And if you want it to feel like this kind of art, you know, if you want to take it to Van Gogh, great. But if you want to make it feel like photo real, there's, you know, mm. you can get into descriptions of lenses and, oh. and, you know, you can really get into, and it, it varies by AI platform, but what the, those inputs are, but yeah, there's a, you, there's a lot you can do to, you know, I've, I've discovered that, you know, chat GPT has its own version that will um, do visual renderings based off text. And really mm -hmm. all it's good for is uh, it's limited to sort of digital looking art. Oh, uh, you're trying to make okay. it photo real and like, can't just can't do it. So they, yeah. they do have their limitations. Um, but I mean, some of the stuff that comes out of them is just incredible. Um but yeah, sorry, I derailed, I derailed the, the answer. <laughs> no, that's okay. <laughs> um, I can't even remember what I asked anymore. <laughs> you're talking about leveraging storytelling and emotion. Yes, and, right, right. <laughs> you know, on the emotion front, 
like I, I keep coming back to super Serve's whole MO is about surprise and delight and treating fans and followers better than they would ever expect. So the emotion for me is, you know, happiness, excitement, uh, gratitude. If I can engender those kinds of emotions in, in the people following, you know, a client's brand, that to me is, I mean, that's what I'm in it for is uh, giving, getting people to feel a certain way. And if that's a positive emotion uh, is so gratifying for me yeah. um, that if I can engender that kind of uh, emotion in a, in a, in a customer for a client, that customer is like, it's back to your skincare thing that that customer is bonded to that client. And that's the win that I look for. So yeah. um, the emotions that I try to, to bring out typically are, Gratitude, excitement, happiness, uh, you know, being appreciated, be, people be feeling valued and appreciated um, because those are all really positive sentiments that that create that bond that I'm looking for. So would you say, again, your opinion is FOMO outdated? Because I remember when that used to be the big driver, like tell people, give them that fear of missing out, you know, and they're if they don't act now, they're losing out. Look, I think it's, I think it's got its place. You know, yeah. I just remember like I was in the web three space mm. uh, and the blockchain space when NFTs were sort of the, the thing mm -hmm. um, it, the, it touched on a, a startup that I had at the time that made sense. So we were exploring that space and so much of it was driven by FOMO that I don't know it, FOMO. It's just a, it's almost like a negative emotion. It is it's very it's negative. Sustainable. It's not a sustain. It's just not a, a sustainable emotion that I want to put in anybody around any brand for any period of time. You know, maybe there's FOMO around this thing happening or to incent you to respond with a comment or something like that. Mm -hmm. But I don't really ever want to lean on FOMO. Look, I think it's real. I think it actually has drives results or can drive results. Mm -hmm. But I think it's. I don't. I don't like it as a technique because it's it's the wrong kind of emotion for what I try and do, which is I'm looking to build longer term relationships with, right. with fans and followers. And you can't, you can't do that on FOMO. No, but you can with positivity, which is what I can see that you're all about. So yeah. that is wonderful. I love that. Well, Jarrett, we've talked uh, and touched on a lot of topics today. I'm so grateful for your insight. Why don't you share with those watching and listening where they can find you and connect with you online? Yeah, um, my website is uh, superserve.me, just as it sounds. Mm -hmm. um, and there's ways to get in touch there. Um, we love to chat. We don't charge to chat. So we're happy to uh, talk strategy with you. Um and share what we can, you know, because uh, rising tide lifts all boats and we're big believers in, in that uh, approach. So yeah, get in touch. We don't bite. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much. Thanks, Lori. Wasn't that an amazing episode? I loved it so much. Social media marketing and the whole digital space has changed over the years. So when you're looking for your own marketing coach, please consider my six week group coaching program called your marketing mentor. There's information in the description below. The next onboarding of my six week group coaching is in May, early May of 2024. And I would love to welcome you at that time. If group coaching is not something that you're comfortable with, I also do one-on-one -on -one marketing and social media coaching as well. So go ahead and check that out. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.